Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining today. My name is Melissa and I'm here to lead you through candlelight yoga. So as we start, if you have a candle or a bunch of candles that you'd like to light, it can be really nice. It can help with a little bit of ambiance, help you to relax after the day and to help you to drop into the practice a little deeper. So feel free to do that if you have a moment. So things that you're going to need for your class today is you'll want to have a yoga mat and your block and blanket will be great to have. If you don't have those, no worries. You can definitely work around those through the class. And as we work through our yoga practice today, I was thinking of, you know, just focusing on the full body today, working on those areas of common complaint like our neck shoulders, back, down into the legs, nice hip stretches as well. So we'll do a nice full body flow and stretch. And this is going to be a wonderful yoga practice to help you relax, to connect to your body and your breath, and to release tension in your body, build some strength, build and increase flexibility. So really benefits of the practice will be limitless. As we get started today, I just wanted to start with a little passage I came across. I, I love the ocean and I'm always really connected to the water. So I saw this and I thought, you know, this is actually kind of cool. It ties into the yoga practice as well. So it's titled Lessons from the Ocean. Go with the flow, but crash when you need to. Be beautiful on the surface, but have depths far below. Touch as many foreign lands as possible, but belong to no one. Sparkle all day, but be reflective at night. Be soft, be unstoppable. So I think there's so many beautiful lines in this that we can bring into the class tonight. You know, go with the flow and, you know, be soft. So maybe in your yoga poses, just trying to notice where you're holding tension, see if you can find a little bit of softness in the poses and the different stretches. And let's jump right in. So we're going to start down on our backs today. So if you'd like to come on down to your back, we'll begin there. And as we come down onto the back body, option to relax your legs along the mat and also relax the arms along the mat. But if your back body is sensitive, if your low back is really sensitive, a nice option would be to bend the knees and then plant the feet. And that will just help you to relax your back muscles a little bit. So it's nice to have a couple options so that everyone can figure out what is going to feel best for themselves and feel really supportive in their own body. And then just take this opportunity to take some breaths in and out. Lengthen your in breath and lengthen your out breath. And then we'll take some time to do a meditation to scan and relax the body and the muscles. Let your eyebrows relax, relax your jaw. Relax the back of your head and the back of your neck. Relax the shoulders, arms. And relax the upper, mid, and low back. Relax your legs. Relax your feet. OK, 
connect with your breath. Connect to the rise and the fall of your breath. Lengthen as you inhale. Lengthen as you exhale. Set an intention for your class tonight. And then that could be anything. It might be that you want to relax a bit. It might be that you're very tense in a particular area of the body. Maybe you want to release that, bring healing to that area. Starting with a full body stretch. Hands can come up and overhead. Maybe put your toes, maybe flex your feet. Allow for your body to be as active as possible here. Knees into the chest. Let's take one hand for each knee. So we'll take our right hand for our right knee and left hand for our left knee. Separating the knees, we'll take our knees out to the sides of the room and then scoop them back to center. And then we're gonna float them out to the sides of the room. Bring the knees in. And release. Right knee comes into your stomach and into your chest. Left leg, either plant your foot, have your knee bend, or straighten your leg. So you have a couple options here. Begin to circle your knee. So maybe find large circles here, maybe find smaller circles. We're just gonna work that really nice rotation into the hip joint here. And circle in the other direction. And release. We're going to take that knee and pull it into the chest and into the stomach for a moment. So arms are going to run along your body and you're going to hug them into your body a bit and try to have your elbows run straight back. So this might give a little, little stretch into your hip joint, maybe a little pressure. Let's call this one Papa Mutasana. And changing up the stretch a tad, we're just going to shift that right knee to the right a little bit more. Avoid your stomach and avoid your rib cage and pull your knee into the underarm area. So Pava Mutasana, but just a little different variation this time. And then releasing, let's take the sole of our right foot to the inside of the left leg. So we'll just take the sole of the foot to the inside of the leg. You can press down if you need to into the outer edge of your foot and into the heel of your left foot, just to feel that the hips lift up and that they even off a little bit. We don't wanna be leaning to the right too much on this one. If it feels okay in the shoulders, maybe bring your hands up and overhead. But we do want this to feel like a passive stretch in the shoulders. So if it's pulling a little bit, just have your arms run along your body. And this brings us into a reclining tree pose. This one is called Supta Vajrasana. And from here, we're going to take our right knee off towards the left, and that will bring us into a spinal twist. So if you wanted to press into that right foot and your left heel, you could lift your hips up and then scoot your hips to the right a little bit to give you a little bit more room in your twist. Feel free to use that left hand on your right knee and try to relax your right shoulder down and try to gaze off your right shoulder to get a little bit more of a twist. And 
We'll bring ourselves back to center. Let's realign here. Left knee into the chest and into the stomach. Fingers will interlock. Right leg relaxes along the mat. Knee can be bent, foot can be planted if you'd like. And we're going to find our circles here. Now, as you work with the stretches on the side of your body, just notice that the stretch feels very similar on the side of the body to the first side of the body that we worked on. It may feel very similar on the side. It could also feel very different one side to the next side. And reverse, let's flow in the other direction. As you come to stillness here, knee comes into the chest, let's pull it in. Pava Mutasana, hug the arms into the sides of the body, elbows run straight back. Maybe a little pressure in the hip joint, that's normal. Lightening up on that stretch, let's shift our left knee to the left, avoid the stomach, avoid the rib cage, and pull the knee into the underarm area. Avoiding the stomach and rib cage the best you can. And release. We'll bring the sole of our left foot to the inside of the right leg. Maybe pressing down to the outer edge of your left foot and the right heel to lift the hips up. Feel yourself evening off here in your low back. As you have your arms up and overhead, almost like you're growing some branches as you reach and up over the head, as long as that feels supportive and comfortable in your shoulders. The left knee, we're gonna bring that to the right for a spinal twist. We'll come into Supta, Matsi, and Drasana, reclining spinal twist. So you can always press down into your foot and just lift your hips up and send your left hip, send your hips off to the left a little bit just so you can find that twist. So you have one leg straight, one leg bent. And you could also take that left shoulder and try to relax your left shoulder down as best as you can. See if you can get a little different stretch here, a little deeper stretch. And we're going to release. Let's take ourselves back to center here. We'll realign onto our low back. Let's take right hand for right knee, left hand for left knee. We'll begin to circle. So just see which way feels natural. And then we're going to reverse that movement. So we're just going to reverse those circles. So knees are going to come up nice and wide, and then they're going to float into center. Knees come to the chest, let's hug it in. Flow on up through the spine. We're gonna take it into a seated position. So as you come into seated, let's have our right leg in front and left leg will be behind. So we're just gonna sit with our legs crossed. Take your hands up to the sky. Hands are gonna to come to prayer. And as your hands float up, take your gaze up towards the sky as well. So we're just gonna look up to the fingertips. Hands relax down, and then as you do that, let your gaze float down the front body. Breathe in, let's take our hands up. Breathe out, relax the hands down. Good, let's come to a neutral spine here. Right leg will kick off to the right side of the room. Bring the sole of your left foot to the inside of your right leg. Try to square yourself off towards that right leg. So if you, do, if you have to shift a little bit, you can do that. We're going to take our hands to the sky, breathe in, come on down to a fold and exhale. And see, you can relax your head a little bit more. 
Maybe gaze to your navel. Relax your head, relax your neck. Relax through the shoulders. Coming on up, we'll realign here. Left hand lowers. If you wanted to go a little deeper here, let's lower that forearm down. We're gonna take our elbow down and then right arm comes up and overhead. We'll just get a wonderful side stretch here. Try to feel nice and grounded in that right sitting bone. We don't wanna be lifting up too much. So try to press that one down. Core engages, it's coming up to seated. Right foot will bend, well, right foot will kick behind you. So we're gonna bend into that right knee. And if you look down, legs look a little bit like a Z shape here. We'll take our hands to the sky, inhale, twist to the left and exhale. And then as you take your twist here, feel your spine length. And as you breathe in, let your twist deepen as you breathe out. Come back to center, realign here, hands to the sky, full breath in, hands at the heart, full breath out. Let's kick that right leg right out in front. So we'll come back into seated, changing up the leg. So left leg will be in front this time. So we're just gonna even off our hips and leg muscles. Arms come out to the sides of the room. Let's float our hands to the sky, gaze into prayer hands. Hands relax down as you exhale. Breathe in, let's reach up and stretch up. Release. As you relax down, left leg, let's kick that left leg off to the left a bit. Feel free to shift yourself off to the left to square yourself down. We'll take a nice full breath here to lengthen. Fold yourself down as you exhale. Now, as you're folding forward here, try to gently roll your right shoulder down a little bit. That will just help you move a little deeper into that stretch. Maybe in your own body, just noticing where you feel the stretch. So we all experience each pose very differently. Maybe feeling the stretch through the backs of your legs, maybe through the low back, maybe through the back of the neck as you let your head relax and release. Coming up to center, right hand plants, maybe lower your form down. We're going to stretch that hand up and overhead. And then breathe so deeply here. Almost imagine that you could create a bit of space in between the ribs. And release. We're gonna bring ourselves back on up to center. Let's take our left foot and take it behind us. We're just gonna create that Z shape with the leg. Sometimes we call this one a deer pose as well. We'll have our, both of our legs bent, hands to the sky, inhale, and twisting to the right on the exhale. Gaze off your right shoulder and just notice if that helps you move a little deeper into your twist. And release. From here, let's unwrap our pose. We're gonna take our left foot out in front and then shifting forward into a table position. So as you come into table, feel free to grab a blanket to pad your knees. Knees and hips in line, and wrists and shoulders are in one line. And feel the fingers fan out nice and wide here. So we really wanna ground into our index finger and then ground down into the thumb. We are going to work with some earth salutations. So these salutations are really grounding. It's also a really nice heart opening practice. It's great for different back bends, gently warming up the spine. So to start, we're gonna come up onto our knees. This is a knee down mountain pose. We'll take our hands to the sky, inhale, come into a child's pose, exhale. So just gently draw your hips back to your heels and let your heart float down to the mat. The core engages, let's bring ourselves forward. 
rippling forward through the spine, one vertebrae at a time. So this takes us into a knee down plank position. Coming down to the mats, we'll try for a reverse push up. We call this one chaturanga. Coming up onto your elbows for Sphinx pose. So we're just gonna glide hands right out in front. Reach for opposite arms here, just to make sure elbows aren't too far from one another. And give yourself this really nice breath in and out here. Let's stay here, option to lift for more. So hands press down, elbows up, elbows wrap in. Arms can straighten, we'll work with seal pose. Try to reach and stretch through the crown of the head. So we have three options here. Everyone can find the pose that works for their body in this moment. Coming down to the mat, take a nice deep full breath here, pressing into a down dog as you exhale. So as we take down dog, we will shake it out a little bit here. So we'll bend one knee and bend the other knee and relax your head yes and relax your head now. As you find stillness here, we're going to bring those knees down, hips to your heels, back and through into child's pose. Rising up onto the knees, hands to the sky, hands at the heart, breathing out. So that was one full earth salutation. We'll try another variation. Hands to up, breathe in. Come on down to child's pose, breathe out. Ripple forward through the spine, one vertebrae at a time. And moving into cobra from here. So we'll take our reverse push up down to the mat. Bring your hands right underneath your shoulders on this one. Tips of fingers in line with tops of shoulders, pinkies in line with deltoids. Glue the tops of your feet down and Cubic triangle glues down, rise on up. Try to lift as high up to the navel here. Hug your arms into the sides of your body. Let your elbows run straight back. And almost create a bit of a sensation like you could lift your hands from the mat. So on this one, sometimes we can lift even higher, but when we try to lift to our navel, it helps us to get into our back a little differently. So we work on strengthening our back muscles here. Let's take ourselves down to the mat. Take a nice full breath in. We're gonna lift it back on through to a downward facing dog. Again, let's shake it out a bit here. Movement in our yoga poses is really great for just warming up the muscles and opening the body and then getting the body ready for those deeper stretches. Knees will begin to lower. Hips to the heels, child's pose. Rising up, let's take it back on through for knee down mountain. Hands at heart, exhale, great. Let's try another variation. Hands to the sky, breathe in. Come on down to child's pose, breathe out. Ripple forward through the spine, one vertebrae at a time. Moving into boat, let's lower all the way down to the mat. Arms are alongside the body for this one. So we'll take our palms and face them down or take your hands behind your body for yoga mudra. Fingers will interlock, palms touch. You can also square the wrists if you'd like. Glue the pubic triangle down. Rise on up when you're ready. So we're gonna lift as high up as possible. So in this one, really try to use your breath. So as you inhale, Feel yourself lifting up. Let's move deeper into that back bend. And then as you exhale, feel how the body finds a bit of softness in the pose. We can kind of sink down, we can relax. And just feel your body's reaction to each breath. Let's bring ourselves down to the mat. Take a nice full breath here. We're gonna lift ourselves back on through into that downward facing dog. Now, as we take down dog, let's come right up onto our tippy toes. And then drop your heels to the right. So we'll try a side stretch in our down dog. Try to get nice and grounded through both of your feet, grounded into your hands. Come up to your tippy toes, rise, and then soften to the left. 
try to get nice and anchored and grounded in that right hand. Easy to get a little light in that one and then really grounded in left. So try to feel even distribution of the weight. Let's come back on through to center, rising up onto your tippy toes as high as you can. And then drop your heels down to the mat. So the heels don't have to touch the ground, but we do want to just bring the weight back into the heel so that there's not a lot of weight in our hands. We want our hands to be as light as possible. Knees will begin to lower, hips to the heels, child's pose. Let's bring it on up, knee down mountain, hands on heart, exhale. Let's try one more, hands to the sky, breathe in. Coming on down, child's pose. Float it forward, knee down plank, and kink over from here. So we'll reverse push up down to the mat. Hands are in line with your shoulders. Walk your hands up to the sides of the mat, a foot on one side and the other side. Glue the tops of your feet down, cubic triangle glues down, and then rising up as high as you can. And now straighten the arms if that works for you. If you'd like to keep a bend in the elbows, do that as well. So to make the stretch easier, you'll have your hands further away from your body, so out to the sides of the room. To have the stretch more intense, walk your hands into your body. To make the stretch more intense, work on straightening your arms. To make the stretch less intense, have a nice bend in those elbows. Float yourself down. Full breath here. Let's take it back to down dog when you're ready. Now in our down dog, let's cross our legs. We're going to take our right foot to the left side. Have your toes in line and also your heels in line. And then as you exhale, try to soften your heels down to the mat as best as you can. Unwrapping the legs, bringing yourself into our traditional down dog. Left foot sweeps to the right. So you're just gonna take that left foot in front of your right foot. Toes are in line, heels are in line and weight back into your heels. Try to get light in the hands and release. We're gonna float ourselves back on through to our downward facing dog. Knees will lower, hips to the heels, heart softens down. Let's float ourselves back to our knee down plank position, rising with our breath. Hands at the heart, exhale. Let's come on forward to downward facing dog. Toes to the hands for a forward fold. Now, as you take your forward fold, let's shake out those legs a bit here. Bend one knee and the other knee. Relax your head, yes. And relax your head, no. As you find stillness, let's take ourselves into a halfway lift. Fold yourself down. Come on up. Let's take a mountain pose as you inhale. Hands at your heart as you exhale. Yeah, let's bring that right leg up for a tree pose. Now, as you take tree, your foot can go anywhere on the leg that feels comfortable. We just don't want to place our foot right onto the knee joint. So below the knee or above the knee is fine. Maybe hands up and overhead if that feels comfortable in the shoulders. And then anytime we work with our balance and poses, we want to find a drishti. We want to find that one spot to focus concentration, to focus awareness. And once you find that spot, not letting the eye shift at all. Let's come on out of that one. Arms will relax, right foot plants down, left leg rises when you're ready. Maybe hands up and overhead. Imagine that you could grow roots from the bottom of your foot down into the mat. So we want to get very grounded in that right foot. Maybe create a little sensation that this left knee rolls back a little bit. So you can get a nice hip stretch here as well. Nice hip opener. And release. We're going to float those hands down. Legs reset. Yoga mudra through the hands. So on this one, fingers will interlock, palms will touch. Either palms are together, square the wrist if that's more accessible for you. 
Imagine that you could squeeze a pencil between your shoulder blades. Take a nice deep full breath here to lengthen. Let's come it down to fold as you exhale. Arms can run along your back. And if you wanted to deepen that stretch, you could relax the fronts of your shoulders a little bit. Maybe gaze to the wall that's behind you. And release, let's float those hands down. Hands relax down towards the yoga mat. Half lift your hands to the shins. This one's Ardha Uttanasana. We'll fold forward and exhale. And then coming back on up, mountain Tadasana. So grounding into your feet. And then taking your hands at your heart as you exhale. Let's try for an eagle stretch. I, I love this one. It's such a great pose for kind of compressing the body and then releasing that. So we'll take our right leg up and over to start. Toes can be on the ground, maybe leg lifts up a little bit. You can also try for the full wrap as well. You can try to wrap that leg all the way around. Arms come out into T, right arm under, left arm over. Reach for opposite shoulders. Press the backs of your hands together. Arms wrap up and hands wrap up. Now imagine if you could see yourself in a mirror, we would want to create a line that flows from our toes to our fingertips. We'd have this line with our toes, our knees, our elbows, our fingertips, one long straight line here. Elbows come down to the knees. Let's take eagle to the nest. Make sure that you are breathing here. So we just don't wanna hold our breath. We'll keep our nice, Inhale and exhale here. Let's release that one. We're gonna come on out, unwrap arms, unwrap the legs. We're gonna take our hands right up to the sky. So nice full breath in. And then hands on heart, exhale. Let's try for the other side, left leg up and over and left arm under. So you may Notice it's a little easier on the side. Sometimes when we try our poses on the second side, our body remembers where we've been. We have our muscle memory. So that is a nice option for the second side, but sometimes we have imbalances in our body and it can be for so many different reasons. So just notice for yourself, is it easier on the side, maybe more challenging? Elbows come down if you'd like, eagle to the nest. And release, let's unwrap the legs and we will unwrap our arms. So nice little breath in, hands to the sky, breathe in. Come on down to a fold as you exhale, let's hinge at the hips to fold it down. Bringing yourself to your half lift here. Plant your hands, plank, high push up pose. Knees up or down, whichever you prefer. Lower down chaturanga. We'll come to an upward facing dog here. So we're going to take this opportunity to open the chest and open up the heart. Let's come on back to down dog as you exhale. All right, leg to the sky. Let's take our right knee to our right triceps. So we're gonna do a little float forward and a tap. And your leg up and float it back. Knee into your nose, let's do a round crunch. Up and back. Right knee to left tricep, cross it over. Up and back. Let's take our right knee to our right wrist and we'll land in pigeon. We'll come into a really wonderful hip opener. Now, as we set up on this one, feel free to hop your right knee to the right a little bit more. So you'll have your right knee in line with your right hip or your knee can shift to the right even more. That might help to balance you so that you're not leaning to one side or the other too much. We are going to try for a quad stretch here. Left knee bends, left hand for your left foot to pull it in. Now, if your foot feels far away, you're just gonna have that knee bending and then encouraging the leg in a little bit. And if you can't reach it, maybe use your yoga strap. And if you don't have a yoga strap, sometimes getting a little creative looking around the house, maybe like a belt or a tie or something like that. You can just loop it around the foot and then give it a little pull in. This is a 
Great hip flexor stretch, psoas stretch, quad stretch. A lot of positive benefits to this one. Let's release that foot down. Take a moment to square your hips and your shoulders forward. Nice full breath to lengthen. Fold yourself down as you exhale. And then letting the eyes close here. Try to allow for your mind to be clear of thoughts. We always have thoughts moving through the mind. Maybe thoughts for the past, thoughts for the future. Try to release your thoughts. Bring your awareness to the breath. And then just remembering that the present moment is the moment where life exists. So anytime we're worrying about the past or the future, we're not being present. Life is happening now in this moment, in this breath. Let's begin to press on back to downward facing dog. Now, as that right foot plants down, let's bring our left leg to the sky, free limbed dog. Left knee to left tricep, do your float and tap forward. Send it up and send it back. Knee into your nose, let's do a round and a crunch. Send it up and float it back. Left knee to right tricep, float it up, float it back. And left knee to left wrist. We'll come into pigeon. Again, scoot that left knee to the left more if needed. Try to feel even here as well. So we don't want to be leaning to one side. We want to try to feel balanced, almost like our hips and our shoulders were squaring forward here. Right knee bends, right hand for right foot. Take your mind. And then just try to breathe into this one and try to relax. I know that pigeon can be quite intense. It can bring up quite a bit of stretching for people, especially when we take that quad stretch. So try to find softness as best as you can in this one. Maybe notice where you're holding tension. Let that tension go with the exhale. And we will release. So we're going to float the foot down, hip shoulders square forward, and let's come down for our fold here on exhale. And to come out of this one, let's rise up, roll into your left hip and take your right foot to meet your left foot. So we're just gonna bring those legs right out in front. We'll give them a bit of a shake on out. So just have your body here in a 90 degree angle. We call this one Dadasana, staff's pose. 
And we'll try for a nice seated forward fold, Pashimottanasana. So on this one, hands to the sky, flex your feet, full breath in, and then come on down to a fold as you exhale. And this one is going to be so good for our calves and hamstrings. We'll roll ourselves on up through the spine. Come on down onto your back. Bring your knees into your chest, hug them in. Let's take a little rock to the right or the left. So if it feels comfy, you can just grab onto the knees, maybe wrap your arms around your knees, a little more compression there. Little rock to the right, little rock to the left. And then let's bring that into larger circles. So try to roll your low back out on the yoga mat this time. We have our sacrum and we have all of these attachments and muscles connecting to our back, to our hips. And we can just kind of roll it out. It almost gives it a little massage here. So we'll just do that for a moment. And reverse, we'll just flow in the other direction. And then let's come to stillness here. We'll take some time to relax. We'll come into Shavasana. So just how we started our time together today. So legs can relax, arms can relax if you want. That's our traditional resting pose. But you always have that option to modify. So feet plant, knees bend, maybe feet out nice and wide, and then just drop your knees in, or just have your knees in line with your hips. A couple options here. And then just taking some time here to relax. So Shavasana, they say this is our most important yoga pose for the practice. So that through the yoga practice, we are moving, doing so many positive things for our body. We're twisting and turning and folding and back bending. And all of that positively affects our body and our mind, the muscles. And when we just find our softness here and we relax, all of those benefits can be integrated into our body and into the mind. Let's take a moment to just deepen the breath, maybe wiggle the fingers, toes, maybe rotate wrists, ankles. Let yourself come to the side into a fetal position here. Maybe create a pillow with the lower arm. Gently support your head. Feel your body taking the shape of the pose. We're going to come on up. Let's bring ourselves into a seated position. Hands can come into the heart space in prayer in Anjali Mudra. Maybe closing the eyes as we close our practice together. Lessons from the ocean. Go with the flow, but crash when you need to. 
Be beautiful on the surface, but have depths far below. Touch as many foreign lands as possible, but belong to no one. Sparkle all day, but be reflective at night. Be soft, be unstoppable. The light within me honors the light within you. Namaste. Thank you for joining today. It's so wonderful to be here to practice candlelight yoga with you. I hope that you enjoy the practice and I look forward to next class. Take care. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're, you're Thank welcome. You. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks, Melissa. You're welcome.